Hi folks, Blake here. Hope you're doing really well. Today I'm back with another guitar lesson. This is kind of on the edge of intermediate kind of level, but we're gonna basically just go over some things we've already covered in some previous lessons. And then this is not clickbait. I'm gonna show you one simple trick you can use to play every chord in every key on the guitar. The reason I say it's kind of intermediate level is because if you haven't viewed any of my videos before, you're gonna to have to know a couple of things first. Firstly, you're gonna to have to know where are the notes on the bass E string and the A string. And I've covered that in this video where I'll teach you where are the notes on the fretboard and how to remember them. And you're also gonna to have to know how to play E form bar chords. So that is going from an open E shape to a major, so for instance a G major, a position three, and an open E minor, so for instance to a G minor, a position three. On top of that, it's worth knowing A form bar chords as well, so in this case we make these bar chords on the second string, so we take our A and we move it up, so for instance if we did that at fret three, we get a C major, or if we take an A minor up to fret three, we get a C minor. Now if you're not sure what any of that means, you might struggle at the moment with this lesson, so I'd first advise you to check these videos out. So these are the E form and A form bar chord videos on how to play them and how to move them up and down the neck. And all the links to the videos you need are in the description below. Okay, so let's get into one simple trick you can use to play every chord in every key on the guitar. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna answer the question, what chords come in a major key? So if we pick any note to begin with on the bass E string, but for ease, as I've just been mentioning it, we'll go for G, that is the third fret of the bass E string. And then from there, we need to know which notes we play to make up the G major scale. And this can be played across these lowest two strings. And we need to remember this following pattern. So the pattern goes like this. So we start here, let's say we start on the G for a G major key. Then we move up two frets and then we move up two more frets. So we're playing frets three, five, seven. We then repeat that pattern on the A string. So three, five, seven, three, five, seven. And then we miss another note and play fret nine. And then fret 10 is our G, we're back to the octave. Now the real importance here is that that pattern is the same regardless of which note we start on. So if we're gonna start on an A, rather than going frets three, five, seven, we're starting on an A in the fifth position of the bass E string, so we'll go five, seven, nine. So here is the fifth fret of the bass E string, which is an A note. So if I play that same pattern, we instead get frets five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, 11, 12. And if you know your notes on the A string, then the 12, again, is the A. We're back to the octave. Okay, so that's how we know the notes that are in the major scale. Well, the importance of that here is, from the major scale, on every one of those notes, we then build a chord. And I've spoken about this before in a previous video where I went over what chords are in the key of C major, which you can check out here. But essentially, we want to start a different chord, and we're using bar chords, which is why you need to know how to play bar chords, on each one of these notes. So if the note is on the bass E string, and we're doing a major chord, like for G major, then we do this shape. And if it's on the bass E string, and we're doing a minor chord, then we'll do this shape. For instance, A minor here. If instead we're on the A string, so if you remember that G major scale pattern, the first three notes are on the bass E string, but then we can play the next notes, all on the A string. So if we're on the A string and we're playing a major shape, we play that A shape bar chord. And if we're playing a minor chord, we play the same minor chord, so moved up, from an open A minor shape up to what would be our minor chord. Okay, so bearing that pattern of notes in mind and which bar chords we'd play, this is the order of chords that comes in a key. 
So starting from our major, our first chord, we have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and then we have something called a minor flat five, which looks like this, and isn't used very often, it's quite dissonant sounding, so don't worry about that too much, just worry about these first six, and then of course once we get to what is the octave, we're back to a major, because we know it's G major here, and G major here. So therefore, in G major we have the following chords. We have a major chord on the third fret of the bass E string, which is G major. We then build a minor chord on the fifth, and that's A minor. And then we build a minor chord on the seventh, and that's B minor. We then move down to the third fret of the A string and do a major chord. That's C major. Then we do a major chord on the fifth fret. That's D major, and a minor chord on the seventh fret. That's E minor. As I said, we don't use the minor flat five chord very much, but if we did, in this case, it's on the ninth fret here, so it's always the one just before the octave. And then we're back to our major, and in this case, it's a G. Okay, now G major is actually a fairly common key, and so in most cases you can play most of the chords from G major using open chords. So G major, A minor, C major, D major, and so on. A lot of them you can play in open positions. But this pattern of playing a note, missing one, playing one, missing one, playing one, and the same below, and then... So in this case it's 3, 5, 7, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10 can be moved and so can the chords. So we always keep that same chord pattern. So on the bass E string it goes major, minor, minor, and on the A string it goes major, major, minor. And then the last two chords we've been over is the minor flat five and then finally the major which is an octave higher than the one we started on. So for instance in G major, third position and then the tenth position on the A string. Okay, so what if instead of playing the key of G major, we wanted to play a key that's a bit harder, and by that I mean you can't really play open chords for it. Well, let's move our G major shape down one fret. So now we're playing F sharp major. Well, we can use that same pattern and the same chord sequence to give us what the chords in the key of F sharp major are. And that would look like this. Okay, so for F sharp major, we'd start here on the second fret. We've got F sharp major. Then we'd move up two frets. We've got this minor, which is G sharp minor. But the great thing about this method is we can play each one of these chords without actually knowing what the chord is, and we'll know they'll be in the same key. So if we just do it without the chord names for the moment, so we've got our major on fret two of the bass E string. Then we've got our minor on fret four of the bass E string our minor on fret 6 of the bass E string, our major on fret 2 of the A string, our major on fret 4 of the A string, our minor on fret 6 of the A string. If we want to do it but you don't have to worry too much, we've got our minor flat 5 on fret 8, and then we're back to our major on the ninth fret. Now you might actually not know straight away that this is an F sharp major. But you can work it back. So if we know the 12th fret here on the A string is an A, then we've got here a G sharp, here a G, and therefore the ninth fret is an F sharp. So again, it's worked using the same chord pattern and the same numbering system. So just to remind you of what the F sharp major scale would be, we'd have two, four, six on the bass E string, two, four, six on the A string, and then eight, and then nine. And at the ninth fret of the A string, we're back to what would be our F sharp. Okay, hopefully the naming made sense. If it didn't, don't worry too much. If you remember this numbering system and the chord sequence, so that's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor for the first six chords in any key, you'll be able to play 
the first six chords in any key starting on the bass E string. But there's actually more to this as well. So what if you're playing in a minor key? Well minor keys are actually derived from major keys. So this is what I mean by that. If we're playing G major, we know we've got these following chords. We've got G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, and E minor as our first six chords. Now the sixth chord, E minor, is actually uh, the relative minor key for the G major key. And basically that just tells us that if we're playing in E minor, we've got the same chords available to us as if we're playing in G major. So this is really useful to work backwards, because we know if we're playing E minor, well, if we make that the minor chord, we can go backwards, so then there must also be a D major. There must also be a C major. There must also be a B minor. There must be an A minor. And there must be a G major. So those six chords can also be used in the key of E minor. Okay, now I'm an acoustic guitarist. You might be, you might not be. But one other thing to mention is, what if we're playing a key, for instance, D major, and we're right up here. So D major, the first chord, D, would be on the 10th fret. Now, as we start moving up here, it's getting a little bit awkward to play bar chord, basically. We're reaching the body of the guitar. It's very hard to make full bar chords. So we can't use this exact system. But what we can do is quite clever. We can kind of reverse it. So rather than finding our first chord, the D major, on the bass E string, so here at the 10th fret, we can find it on the A string. So for the D major chord, on the A string, it's at the fifth position. Now we've got a lot more of the neck to work with now, so here's how we go from this to playing all the chords in the key of D major, for instance. So again here, we're gonna do a note pattern and then we're gonna build our same chords on them. So if we're starting on the A string rather than the bass E string, we've got a very slightly different pattern. So if we're starting on D, which is the 5th fret here, we still want to do that same initial pattern of 5, 7, 9. So that gives us the first three chords. But then we're moving up to the bass E string. And rather than doing kind of exactly the same, so remember from going from the bass E string we go play the same frets, what we do here is we play 5, 7, 9 on the A string and then we move down and miss another note and we do 3, 5, 7, 9 and then 10 is our root note, so our D. So slowly we've got starting on D major, which is here, the 5th fret of the A string, 5, 7, 9 in frets and then we drop down, we miss one out again, and we go 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 10 is our D. Now the pattern of chords that we apply to this is exactly the same. So remember on top we've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, okay? They're the first six chords as we've been over a couple of times. So now we do that same thing. So starting at D, we've got D major, E minor, two up again, so F sharp minor, this is at the ninth, and then remember we drop down to the three, so we've got G major, A major, and B minor, and if we wanted to, we can play our minor flat five, and that's here at the ninth position, and then we're back to a D. And once again, if you're not crystal clear on where all the notes are, you've just got to remember the pattern and which chord you're playing. So I appreciate I've gone through that quite quickly. Um, hopefully it all made sense. The last thing to do really is just to try and kind of cement it into your memory. Um, there's a few ways to do this. The first way really is teaching yourself that major scale, learning the order of the chords. So remember it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. 
and then minor flat five which isn't really very often used and you're back to your major in this case B major and then the last thing you can do actually is once you've kind of got it in your mind the order of the chords and maybe some of the notes up and down these strings if not all of them you can then start playing some of your favorite songs or covers only using bar chords so for instance if you're playing a song in A and let's say it goes A D E can then just change that so you're doing it as part of this method so A D E E and hopefully that'll get you used to playing bar chords and knowing every chord in every key okay thank you very much for watching this was my lesson on how to play every chord in every key on the guitar using a simple method so remember Remembering the major scale pattern, applying the chord shapes to it, and then you can use that for any key you want. Hope you found it really useful. If you did, consider liking the video. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what you want to learn on the guitar next. And if you are enjoying the content, please consider clicking the subscribe and notification bell buttons. I try and do a video about every week. I do a lot of guitar lessons, but I do other stuff as well. I promote music, I present my own music, I play covers, originals, I do things like gag reels, loads of stuff. Thanks very much, take care of yourself, and I'll see you next time. I'd find in you a reason for believing things I thought wouldn't come true. I wouldn't have waited.